This is my love letter to the Yarn Cozy Light. Because a picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is worth... Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and this is the Yarn Cozy Light. This pattern can be found on my Ravelry and Etsy shops starting on May 1st, which is Friday. Make sure to use the coupon code COZY30 on Ravelry and Etsy to get 30% off the Yarn Cozy Light pattern for the first two weeks, which means through May 15th. Now, I cannot wait to tell you all about this pattern, so let's get started with the inspiration. Okay, so let's talk about the inspiration behind the Yarn Cozy Light. So it all started with my float tote, and this is actually one of the cups out of my float tote. Float tote is a larger circular or oval tote bag design, and then these cups go inside of it so that you can put your yarn cakes inside of them. As you can see, these are bulky, they're actually worsted weight held doubled crocheted pieces, so not really like cute and light, <laughs> but they are super functional for holding on to yarn cakes and yarn balls. Now, I really, really liked those bowls for their functionality, but I actually had another product that I liked better as a cozy, and that was these. These are the, I think they're just called Yarn Cozy, but they're by Buffy and Designs. They're made of a knit elastic fabric, and they've got stretchy bits on the top and the bottom. These are seriously so awesome. They hold on to your yarn cakes all the way down to very small. The only issue that I had with these, well, there was two issues. I could not always find them. And then when I could find them, they weren't exactly the aesthetic that I was looking for. Like they're cute, but sometimes I found, and maybe it's just me wanting to match, but like these not matching the aesthetic of my yarn. So I wanted to create something where I had complete control over the look of the cozy and also make it not bulky like this one. So then was born the Yarn Cozy Light. So that's where we got to. Here's another one. Here's another one and one more. That's how we got to the version that is today. So let me tell you a little bit more about the pattern design process. So it started with this first one, which is just nice and plain and simple rib. Um, these are made out of fingering weight, but I'll get all the, to all the details here in just a second. But I wanted to start with one that was very, very simple. Um, the first issue that I ran into was actually figuring out what to do with the bind off. I wanted to try doing like different kinds of ribbing and then I wanted to try like a fold over him, but that just wasn't working out. Like you could do it, but it was just a little too complicated and I don't want my patterns to be complicated at all. So when I asked for some help, I think it was on a YouTube live, somebody suggested doing a uh, super stretchy I-cord bind off, which is one um, that I have on my other cozies, my can cozy and my bottle cozy. So I thought, why not try it? And it worked out great. Now from this first one, I did make some tweaks. Um, this was the second one. I wanted to incorporate some other stitch patterns so that there was variety in the pattern and the pattern was something that was very, va like had value enough to be a purchase pattern. So we can't, I, we, I say we, I, I came up with some other ideas. Um, and this is the faux cables version. So this is actually a twist and not a cable, no cable needles required. Um, and just another version of ribbing with the same bind off on the top. Slightly different than this one. And the reason they look different in size is that the balls of yarn inside them are different. The last version to come along, I was so excited to do this one, is the self-striping version. It's actually got the same ribbing, but it came with its own set of challenges. I wanted to make sure when you were using like a leftover self-striping sock yarn that you wouldn't see the color changes. So I had to work out um, you know, how to hide the color transitions, and then of course how to explain that in the pattern. And then also how could you end with 
one color for the I-cord bind off. So all of that is in the pattern with all my tips and tricks. But other than that, it was a pretty smooth process for this design, which I am super, super grateful for. Okay, let's talk about how to use it. So when you're finished with your cozy, it will look something like this. And then you just need a cake of yarn. I've got one right here. This cake of yarn is actually in use, so don't mind something coming out of the center. But a cake of yarn, and you're gonna use the center of this cake of yarn. And all you're gonna do is hold the I-cord end to the bottom and kind of stretch it around, it's kind of like a hat in reverse, and then just let everything get all nice and tucked in. Sometimes you have to kind of rearrange it, but these are super stretchy and they're gonna work for a variety of yarn types. This is a 100 gram skein of fingering weight yarn. Here I've got a 100 gram skein of a DK weight yarn. You can potentially maybe fit worse head weight in there, but it's gonna be really stretched out so just be careful with that um, but it does work really well for your other fingering weight and dk weight cakes now what i love about this so much is that these are so fun for using your leftovers so you can use any leftover fingering weight from any project especially socks like self-striping or just any kind of those beautiful hand dyed yarns that you don't want to get rid of but you have too much left over to be a true scrap, these are excellent projects. They're relatively quick, probably four to five hours to knit just because it is a small needle and small yarn, but that does make them great gifts so you can start working some up for Christmas or just start making them for your own stash. Now, it's a lot of fun to make super colorful ones, kind of like these, but I think it would also be nice to have like a more neutral set of them. So when you're kicking up a bunch of yarn for a sweater, all of your yarn has matching yarn cozies. I don't know if I'm actually gonna do that, but it does sound really nice in my head. Now, the other thing that is super amazing besides just looking cute is these are really, really functional. I had a project that I used the fingering weight yarn almost down to the very end, and this held onto it. I was pulling out of the center of the cake, and the cozy just, because it's ribbing, kept you know, shrinking and getting smaller. And then because it is made of, you know, a sock yarn, a wool yarn, it has a little bit of cling. And so it just held onto my yarn. It didn't get tangled up in my project bag or anything all the way to the very end. So I've got a little video to show you from past Natalie that I'm going to insert here. Hello from the past. <laughs> I thought I would just show you guys um, while I am I'm working on this project here. Um, just how well these little yarn cozies are holding the last few um, bits of my yarn. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you don't have to look at me like that and show you guys how they're doing. So this is how my project bag has been. It's been sitting on the floor while I've been sitting in my chair and working the final rows on this beautiful pattern. This is um, the Soundwave Shawl by, um, by Stephanie Aaron and it is so much fun, it's lovely, but it does use almost all of these two skeins of fingering weight yarn. So you can see I have one cozy that's just been sitting up here. This is a, a shell of a float tote um, with no buckets in it. I've just put this in there. You can see that this cozy is still hanging on to those last little bits of yarn. I don't even know if there's five grams left in there. So that's been doing really, really well. I think just because of the fact that this is yarn and this is yarn, it kind of gives it a grip so that I can continue pulling from the center without anything coming out. And then this one has a bit more yarn in it, you can see um, right here, but it's still doing really well. It just kind of, you know, deflates and shrinks up because it was real stretched out when I first put that skein in there. Um, but it is doing a great job of holding on to these guys. So I'm really, really, really happy with that. All right, let's talk details. These guys are pretty small. You don't need a lot of yarn. Just 15 grams, maybe 20 to be safe. Now, the needle size you need is anything you would use probably for your socks. I like to use a US size one 2.25 millimeter needle. I like 32 inch um, 
circulars so I can do magic loop. However, you can totally use nine inch circulars on these after you've done this bottom part. Can you see the end <laughs> that I still haven't woven in? So after you get through the bottom and you have all of your stitches, you can certainly use the nine inch circulars for like the body of the cozy. You just might want a needle size bigger to do the I-cord bind off if you tend to be a tight bind offer tight bind off person. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Um, but generally just your sock needles and your leftover sock yarn and you are good to go. Now as far as special stitches, really there's nothing super special. There is ribbing, there are increases, um, and of course there is this stretchy I-cord bind off. In the cabled version, there is a faux cable that I explain. And then in the self-striping version, there is some technique that comes with doing the stripes. I do have several videos that go right along with this pattern. I think I've got three videos. Uh, one is already on YouTube. That's the stretchy I-cord I -cord bind off. So you can go check that out right now. The second is going to be up on YouTube soon. It goes along with this one. It's how to um, hide the color change when you're using self-striping yarn and doing ribbing. And then the third one is on my IGTV, and that is how to smoothly, let me see if I can find one of these. I think that's the join, how to smoothly join the I-cord at the end. That's on my IGTV. So all of those, tutorials that go along with this pattern are completely free so you can check them out make sure you feel comfortable um, before purchasing purchasing the pattern um, if need be don't forget that you can grab the pattern below starting on friday may 1st through the links that are in the description box don't forget to use that coupon code cozy30 to get 30 percent off for the first two weeks and I think that is all. So I am signing off my love letter to the Yarn Cozy Light. Love and stitches, Nitty Natty.